Good afternoon, North Shore families. Um, it's I hope your this uh, webinar finds you having a great North Shore day, and uh, I want to welcome you to the first parent Zoom meeting to um, share with you, sort of from a parent perspective, how you can best support your student. And I want to begin by thanking you for your patience and extending us grace as we move to a new way to deliver instruction that provides for a safe and healthy environment for your student and our staff. And just really want to thank you for supporting a safe and healthy um, approach to how we're going to continue a world-class education here in North Shore. So with that said, I want to also let you know that I'll be sending a note to each student in the district acknowledging that change can be difficult um, and that we expect to hear a lot of feedback from them and we want them to be patient with us as well. We don't want perfection to get in the way of our progress and if there are systems or questions or ideas you have, we know you'll share them with us as well because together all things are possible. So I'm going to turn the webinar over to our technology team and our instructional support group that will be working with us on this journey over the next several days or however long we're going to need to be out of school. So thank you and here's Shelby. Hi everybody, welcome to our very first parent and family information session for North Shore Learns. Uh, I'm going to share a slideshow so you're not going to see my face, uh, but you will hear my voice. And we'll be using the Q&A box at the lower portion of your screen to be able to collect your questions and answer them thoughtfully. Thank you for your patience as we learn some things about the technology that we're using with students and with families. We're really excited to be able to do some wonderful things using a multitude of platforms. We're also going to be using subtitles today. So those of you that um, prefer to um, read in Spanish will be able to see Spanish subtitles at the bottom of the screen. So I'll give that just a moment to get that started. If you're just joining us uh, a few minutes late, you might have missed Dr. Reed uh, giving us a lovely uh, welcome and an opening. We are recording this session. So if you did miss Dr. Reed's opening remarks, you'll be able to uh, hear those in the recording as well. Thank you as I speak slowly to try to do multiple things all at once. So again, um, my name is Shelby Reynolds and I'm the Assistant Director for Instructional Technology and Library Services here in North Shore. You are joining us for our very first virtual parent session uh, to support families who are helping to move their students to online learning in the midst of our coronavirus <coughs> response. Again, we're using Zoom, which many of us have used before for internal meetings and other kinds of activities that we've done with students and with staff, but this is the first time we're really using this platform widely with uh, the community. And we know that um, there's new things for us to learn all the time, so we appreciate your grace and your patience, your graciousness, as we leverage the tools to get information to you in a timely manner. This session is being recorded and it will be posted. Uh, we also are planning to do at least two more of these parent sessions. We're broadcasting today's session with subtitles in Spanish. Uh, when we post recordings, we will do so with closed captioning. So if you have folks in your community who want to be able to uh, read captions because of hearing impairments or other issues, um, look for those recordings. Uh, we may do other languages in future sessions as well. So just stay tuned for uh, the different ways that we can get this information out in a variety of formats. Here are your hosts for today. Um, Katie Bjornstad is joining me uh, in the room today. She is the Assistant Principal for Virtual Learning Options here in North Shore. Some of you may also recognize her as the Assistant Principal at Skyview Middle School. And yours truly is also here, Shelby Reynolds. That's my picture at the bottom of this slide. I'm the Assistant Director for Instructional Technology and Libraries here in North Shore. Here are the topics we're going to cover today. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what is this North Shore Learns initiative. We're going to talk about why your partnership is so important in the success of this initiative and in your child's education. We're going to give you some brief tips on how to support your student as things start to ramp up on Monday. We'll talk a bit about communicating with teachers. And we'll show you some resources for asking for help and staying connected. So why North Shore Learns? Why did we launch this initiative? 
It's important for folks to understand that the North Shore School District is uniquely situated geographically and uh, in close proximity to some of the most um, affected areas in the state. And as of yesterday, we had um, 26 of our 33 schools that were potentially affected by um, first-hand exposure or second-hand exposure to the virus. So um, that's one portion of uh, the thinking behind why it's important for us to uh, close schools to keep our kids safe. From a staff standpoint, we have a high number of staff that fall into one of the um, susceptible groups in terms of um, potentially having uh, exposure to or a um, proclivity to contracting the virus. And so we felt that um, to avoid um, safety issues for our students and to be able to adequately staff, we really um, couldn't make that commitment. So we wanted to make sure to um, close schools and think about how to shift learning online. So uh, last weekend, a group of folks from all over the district got together to craft a plan for how we could continue learning in the, in the case of the school district being closed. And it was really important to us that we provide um, equitable opportunities for students to have access to resources and to instruction and to the support they needed to be successful outside of our school walls. So we created North Shore Learns. This is our program for moving learning out into, the, into our homes and into the community and outside of our buildings. We've created a companion website for North Shore Learns that should be your one-stop shop to get to all the resources you need as a, as a family or as a caregiver. And we'll be advertising the URL for that website throughout this session. And most importantly, we just want to be really proactive in the support we're providing for families. It's critical that we partner with you to make sure that students are successful, whatever context they might be coming from. So our session today is our attempt to get ahead of the efforts that will begin in earnest on Monday and to make sure you have the resources you need to be successful. Parent partnership is a key piece of education, whether it happens um, in our homes, in our community, or in our school buildings. And it's important to understand everybody's role in that partnership. For North Shore Learns, teachers will be responsible for facilitating lessons, activities, assignments, and the things that students need. And parents are responsible for making sure that their children are fully engaged in their learning. And we'll talk more about what that looks like in a bit. Whether learning online or in person, research tells us that parent and caregiver support for students is essential for success. Staying engaged, asking questions, making sure that you're reaching out for support when you need it, these are all really important parts of the parent and school partnership. It's also important for us to understand what online learning or e-learning is and what it isn't. E-learning is a thoughtful blend of online and in-person activities and lessons. It's a way to push learning out beyond the four, the four walls of the school and leverage technology to connect students with people and ideas and concepts that we may not be able to deliver within the four walls of our school buildings. And it's also a way to leverage technology to personalize learning for students. When we use technology to deliver different kinds of curriculum or uh, different levels of learning and different ways of presenting content, we're better able to reach the specific needs of each of our students. It's important to know that e-learning is not a student sitting in front of a computing device for eight hours. <laughs> it is not our expectation or our intent to have students take a device home with them and use it uh, fully for a, a school day's worth of screen time. That is not the intent here. Our teachers have worked very hard this week to develop content and lessons and strategies for um, engaging students in a variety of activities. Online platforms are just the, the mechanism for delivering that instruction. Our families and caregivers can uh, support students by making space and time for learning. It's important to have a schedule and an environment that support learning, whether online or in person. Consider setting up a space that is not the student's bedroom. Uh, kitchen counters, tables, family spaces all make really good student offices. The picture that you see on the screen here is actually a picture we got earlier this week 
from a staff member whose daughter had taken it upon herself to create herself a school office in their living room, complete with blankets and pillows and all the things to be comfortable. And you can also see in the background there, um, this student has lined up all of her notebooks. I see a protractor and as a former math teacher, that makes me very happy. And I see lots of great learning materials, including print materials and devices for learning. So whatever that environment is um, set up like, it just needs to be conducive for learning, comfortable for your student, and is not meant to be a space that is normally intended for play or for relaxation. It's also important to have a schedule that the entire family can use to understand when is learning time and when is not. We have a sample schedule located on the North Shore Learns website. But remember, you need to create a schedule that works for your family, particularly if your family has childcare during the day or you have a network of care providers that um, help you maintain a, a schedule of making sure children are supervised. Um, you need to come up with a schedule that works for your family. And almost most importantly, <laughs> you need to make sure to schedule breaks and outside time and family time, especially during the day. Um, we want to, um, as much as we can, reduce the feeling of social isolation for our students, um, not being at school and not having those social times at recesses and at lunch and during class time um, can feel very isolating to students. So it's important to um, not only schedule breaks to um, relieve mental stress, but also to get together with, with other children and have um, some good fresh air time as well. Be sure to create a supportive network during this time of implementing online learning. And that includes um, both your role as a caregiver and also um, leveraging the connections you may already have in your community and in your neighborhood to lean on each other for support during this interesting time. Um, first, think about monitoring the progress of your student. Put your student in charge. Ask them to log into their classrooms online and show you what they look like and how they're interacting with the teacher and with other students. In some of the platforms that teachers are using, including Google Classroom, you can sign up for parent accounts or guardian accounts for your student so that you can monitor the work that they're doing in their classes. And even though it's tempting to, uh, you know, give a lot of independence to middle and high school students, and they need that, they also still need guidance and support. So be sure to stay engaged with our middle and high school students as well. It's very important that our parents and caregivers model positive behavior. Positive attitudes toward change and uncertainty can really help alleviate stress, especially with our younger students. This is a very uncertain time and they're gonna to look to you to understand how to deal with change. So it's important to model that positive behavior. It might be a frustrating time for you too. If you're learning some new things or you're also dealing with stress at your job, try your best to, um, to deal with those feelings in a way that supports your child through their struggles as well. And as Dr. Reed has said, aim for progress, not perfection. There is a time and a place where it's appropriate to make mistakes and recognize what we learn from them. And this would be a great opportunity to acknowledge the purpose of mistakes in learning. Finally, use a support network. You could set up family study sessions where older siblings can help younger siblings, especially if they're all using the same platforms for their learning. You could reach out to neighbors and form study groups and online support networks. You could even rotate supervision responsibilities among the adults in your network. Maybe you've got a particularly techie friend or somebody who knows these platforms well who can be a source of tech support for your friends. Some other questions to think about and ideas to think about when creating that supportive network. Who in the neighborhood might be able to look after several families' children? And maybe that rotates, maybe that responsibility rotates. How can a neighborhood or a friendship group use a rotation schedule to provide supervision for students? Again, you might have folks in your neighborhood or your, your peer group who have content expertise, maybe in social studies or in math or who have a particular interest in writing or reading that they want to share with students through some sort of study group. Um, think about leveraging older siblings and other students to be able to support the learning of younger children. There's a lot of research that says one of the best ways to learn content is to teach it to somebody else. And why not use our students to help extend their learning by helping younger students pick up new um, ideas. And you could use social media to connect with others. Be sure to protect student privacy though. Uh, creating and using social media groups uh, such as Facebook 
uh, are great. Let's just be sure that we're using those with netiquette in mind and digital citizenship at the forefront of what we do. We always want to protect the privacy of our students. Speaking of technology, it's really important that we keep in mind that all students and staff and families in North Shore are expected to follow the expectations in North Shore's responsible use procedure. You can find that online linked through our North Shore Learns website, but essentially it tells us that we need to be good digital citizens. That means we're kind online and that we use technology appropriately, we use it for learning, and we ask for help when we need it. And certainly we report any um, bullying or any um, inappropriate use of online uh, resources. If students or families need access to a device or a hotspot for internet access, we have an online form that you can fill out to make that request. We also have paper copies of that form available at every school and here at the Admin Center in case you don't have a device to be able to access that online form. We're happy to support folks who need that technology to be able to continue learning at home. All students have an account that lets them access a variety of tools. If they need their account password reset, they can contact our new family support line at 425-408-7669. That line is specifically for technology-related support issues. So, Please call that number if you have a question about how to connect your student's device to a network or if you have questions about accessing your student's account online. It's very important that we consider students with special needs in this environment because not all students have the same access to the tools or to the types of um, resources that uh, promote online learning in our district. So uh, this slide tells you a little bit about what we're doing for students who have those special needs. Our instructional staff will be providing services to our students with disabilities um, as best they can using the platforms we have in an effort to reach those service minutes that are indicated in the student's IEP. And when services return to the classroom setting, IEP teams will meet to determine if additional services are needed for those students. <coughs> If you have any questions about your student and their ability to meet the expectations uh, in our North Shore Learns program, you'll just want to direct those questions to your student's IEP case manager. Let's talk a little bit about communicating with teachers. Teachers spent some time this week learning a whole bunch of new tools, and initially reports were telling us that they were sending a lot of communication. We've worked with them over the last few days to, to think carefully about the timing of those messages. We understand that especially if you have multiple children in your household, you're receiving an abundance of email. And we have had some conversations with principals and with staff across the district to use subject lines that clearly identify the class and the teacher so that as you start to sort through that email, it becomes clear which teachers are sending what and what the topic is and so on and so forth. So we are developing some strategies for you to, for our teachers to use to make sure that their communication is really clear. Be sure to use um, all the resources available to you to communicate with teachers. You can use email, you can use Zoom meetings to meet with them virtually, or if your student is younger, help your student attend an online session or ask questions of their teacher. Be sure that you are aware of the ways to ask for help and stay connected. We're going to be using um, a daily morning broadcast, a North Shore News broadcast uh, in the morning and every evening. We're going to continue to have virtual parent meetings. There is a contact form on the North Shore Learns website that you can use to submit questions or ask for help. Don't forget about our family tech support hotline at 425-408-7669. And again, be sure to reach out to your community. You have neighbors and friends and um, peers that are experiencing the same things that you are. So be sure to lean on your community during this time. And that brings us to the end of our formal presentation. I've been listening to Elizabeth and Katie here in the background <laughs> answering questions furiously using their, um, the tools in the Q&A. We'll leave this open, uh, this webinar open in the Q&A box open for the next little while to let you ask additional questions and to give folks time to answer those questions. 
Thanks to everyone for attending today. We had at one point, I can see people leaving the room. Um, we had a, a about 2,500 people at one point, and that shows that people are really invested in getting the most current information and supporting their students. And we look forward to um, further partnering with you to help your students be successful. Um, so be sure to go to North Shore Learns and to your school websites to get the most current information. And we look forward to partnering with you. With that, have a great evening. Have a relaxing weekend. Uh, use this time to talk to your student about what next week's going to look like. And be sure to um, start thinking about that support network.